What is faith according to the Bible and what does the New Testament scriptures have to say concerning faith? Coming up in this video, I'm going to show you some profound truth concerning faith that will forever change the way you read the scriptures. And hey, my name is Masood Ramandi and here in Perfected by Blood, we bring you keys, tips and revelations to build your understanding into a Christ-centered consciousness. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And uh, we are starting a new series on faith, uh, this uh, most important theme of the entire Bible, especially uh, the New Testament scriptures which reveal what this faith is. We're going to be spending time on uh, what is faith, what is the faith of God? What is the faith of Jesus? What is the faith of the Son of God? What is um, basically that which Paul says we need to fight the good fight of faith? And uh, so many other scriptures that uh, are around this faith so we can understand it better. So right in the beginning, I need to make this clear that uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you about in this series is not uh, the kind of faith uh, that brings us escape from hell. So that uh, basically traditional understanding of you need to believe to have a certain salvation. This is not what I'm talking about. And also, I'm not uh, basically spending so much time on the faith uh, which is being taught in a way of exchanging with God in the sense of having faith for healing or having faith for finances or having faith for this or that. I'm going to go deep down to the root of this issue because if you remember when Jesus talked about having faith, he said that right after cursing a fig tree by the root. So that shows us uh, in mature uh, understanding of sonship, we have to go way deep into the root so we can begin to um, basically uproot the tree rather than always trying to get rid of the fruits because that's what the law does. The, the story of uh, basically what is being revealed through Jesus is uh, so much more, it's so much more amazing and uh, beyond comprehension honestly sometimes that we literally need um, basically God kind of uh, forcing us into this belief by his love and these are all the themes that we're going to have in the next videos uh, so you can even understand what it means that faith works by love but um, now I need to uh, bring this into your attention that the Bible doesn't start from New Testament it doesn't start from the book of Matthew uh, and it doesn't start with Paul's letters the Bible starts from Genesis. So the story of mankind, which now we are talking about faith uh, in this man or in everything around this man, goes all the way back to the very beginning, the very Genesis of all things, the book of Genesis, where we have a record of everything. And mainly I'm talking about man. Uh, and the first time that man is mentioned, uh, basically sets in order what we need to pay attention to so we can understand the story of mankind and God. What is the first thing that we see concerning man? It's Genesis chapter 1. What do we read? God said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. So the story of mankind is the story of an image. God had an image in his mind that was supposed to be formed and made into a man. God had an imagination that was about a certain man. God was thinking about something that was about a man. God was mindful of something that was called a man. Psalm chapter 8 begins this way. There is a man who is talking to God, the psalmist, and he says, what is man that you are mindful of him? So right then we see again that God is mindful of this man. And the same thing is basically pointed out in Hebrews chapter 2, uh, which we read, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him. Now, 
There, is, uh, there was a time that two men on the same ground stood face to face and talked together. One was called Simon son of Jonah and the other was called Jesus of Nazareth. This Jesus told Peter, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? Peter said, you are the son of God. So son of man is son of God. If you get this, this will begin to uh, basically provide a way of entrance into the mystery of God. He says, son of man is son of God. But right then Peter turns to this son of Jonah and he says, but now Peter, you are blessed because this son of man being the son of God was just revealed to you. So the question is answered. What is man? Son of God. What is the son of man? He's the son of God. So what is he trying to say? He's trying to say, when we speak of a son of someone, that someone is the father. So the son doesn't start his journey uh, by being birthed from anything else, but from the father. So he says, what is man? Son of God. What does it mean? He originates from the father. So what was that thing that started right in the beginning in Genesis chapter one? Clear, my own image, my own likeness. You are my image and my likeness. What does that mean? That means you are a reflection of who I am. Now imagine this never changed. Like the, the gold never becomes gold just by trying to become gold. The gold is gold right from the beginning. So you don't try to become the image of God. You start that way. You start that way. Now, there, there was a problem, obviously, that uh, Adam uh, fell from that mindset that was mindful of that which God was mindful of. I say it again. Adam's fallen state of mind brought him out of uh, tune with the original thoughts of God concerning himself. Now, when Jesus came, Jesus came to redeem that image once again. So man, instead of looking at the corruptible image that he had inherited now from the forefathers, he can begin to see the original image that was carved on him. That's why even we have uh, basically that story in the Gospels when um, Jesus comes to uh, basically a group of people, they're asking him, uh, should we pay tax to Caesar or not? And Jesus begins to answer them by illustrating something. He says, give me a coin, gold or something. And they gave him that coin. And he says, look at this coin. Who, whose image is on this? They say Caesar. And then he says, give to Caesar. What is Caesar's? But also he added something more, something way profound, uh, something more loving and something more kind, which was, but give to God what is God's. What was God's? His own image. But where was that uh, engraved on or inscribed upon on mankind. So man was that coin that had the image. That's why even you can understand Luke chapter 15, the parable of the lost coin. Uh, why the woman in the house was trying to find uh, the coin? Be because the coin belonged to her. So what is the illustration that God is trying to say? You're much more than what you have believed about yourself. You're more than what you know about yourself. And there is something that has covered the image that you are. That something that has covered the image that we are has made that which we truly are unseen. So the flesh comes to veil the true you, the true me, the true human beings. Who are the true uh, human being? What is the true mankind? The image of God, sons of God. Now, does someone become son of God? 
just by believing in Jesus and this these are all the things that we're going to be covering in depth in this series to even understand what does it mean to believe in Jesus well actually believing in Jesus is not even in the Bible we have either believe believing Jesus or believing into Jesus which are way again more gracious than believing in Jesus so we're not called to forcefully believe uh, in Jesus or uh, basically we would experience uh, condemnation and punishment Jesus came to show that we were already under condemnation and in fact in John chapter 5 he calls us dead he says those who are dead in the grave if they hear the voice of the Son of God they will rise who is the Son of God is the image of God so what voice will awaken us he says it's the voice of the Son which you are so if for God to awaken us back into what we were created in God's thoughts and heart and delight and pleasure he needed to send forth a voice like ourselves that he would speak in human flesh to those who were in human flesh so that voice could be heard and that voice could bring faith inside of us now you can understand why uh, romans chapter 10 says faith comes by hearing faith comes by hearing but let's stop here for a moment let's look at uh, hebrews chapter 11 to understand this even uh, deeper verse 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so do you see there is something about not seen so there is unseen and this thing is all over the epistles uh, this thing about the things that are unseen uh, the invisible the invisible God or the unseen is eternal um, and these things are all about the unseen what is the unseen the very first part of this verse gives us the answer it says faith is the substance of things hoped for now the word substance it actually means person so this is how it should read and I know your Bibles don't read this way but I'm going to explain now faith is the person we hope for faith is the kind of person we hope to be faith is the kind of person we hope to manifest that's why even right after that he says it's the evidence of things not seen so what is not seen it's the person what is that person that is the image that is the one that we have been from the beginning just as God says before you were in your mother's womb in flesh I knew you so your origin is not your father in flesh or your mother mother in flesh your origin is that voice from the beginning that said you are my son so your origin the image that you are is something more beyond that which was uh, at some point uh, came out of a womb of a woman the image that you are is the is the weight that is equal with God born of God like God in the image of God born of man like man in the image of man but born of God like God in the image of God so what does faith do faith brings into our focus that which we are but yet not fully manifested so faith begins to hear what God says about that which we are on the inside covered by the veil of the flesh so when we can hear that we can allow that to manifest effortlessly so we can enter into God's rest because we acknowledge God's work was perfect in the beginning concerning us when he said you are my image and then we realize that his other work was also perfect in Jesus Christ when he came 
to redeem that which was lost again the image inside of us so when we can begin to understand both the creation was perfect and the redemption was perfect we can begin to interest effortlessly not trying to prove anything but acknowledging what is already true about us that's why uh, this faith begins to have so much more glory than uh, just trying to get things from God. If you even remember uh, in the story when Jesus sent um, the people, his disciples to go and preach the kingdom, casting out demons, healing the sick, they returned joyfully and they said, even the demons submit to us. And he said something profound. He said, don't look at the effect of who you are understand that what you are and who you are will cause these things to happen now i was paraphrasing this but he said don't uh, rejoice that spirits are subject to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven what does that mean that means your origin is not the seen realm of flesh your origin is your god who is in heaven your origin is the father that I say pray to him so he constantly tried to show uh, when you don't see your origin you begin to enter into your labor but when you begin your origin you begin to see what God sees and then you don't try to impress him you just accept what he shows you this is what the firstborn Son of God told us in the New Testament. Let's go to Gospel of John so you can understand uh, how this unseen uh, basically was in the language of Jesus. John chapter 5 verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do for whatever he does the son also does in like manner so what do we see here he says the the son can do nothing except by seeing what the father does so what is he trying to say he says for me to be able to do i must see because if i don't see I will not do the work of the Father, I will do my own work and in that sense I will be in labor. But when I see the Father, I see what He sees and I will understand what He understands and I will know what He knows and I will speak what He speaks and in this conversation between the two of us, the fruit of this conversation would be that the manifestation that I'm looking for would happen. Now he says, it's about the son seeing the father. But right after that, in verse uh, 20, he says, for the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. So now he says, it's not only that the, the son sees the father. In fact, the father shows all things to the son. Let me read it again. For the father loves the son and shows him all things. The verse before said, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. So what the father shows, the son sees. What does that mean? That means the, the son, if the son sees something, that means he wasn't seen it before. That means what he's beginning to see is the unseen now what is the father revealing to the son anyway all that he's showing him is about who he is in the father and that's why he says even right after that the manifestation of this would be the giving of life you can read this in verse 21 for as the father raises the dead and gives life to them even so the son gives life let's go back to the beginning what was the job of the tree of life giving life so you see how when the when when the son sees the father as a life giving source 
he himself mirrors that tree in himself and he becomes the giver of life that's even why 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, We with unveiled face, beholding or reflecting the glory of the Lord as in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image. So that's amazing because it says the way to be is seeing. The way to be that person that I want to be is seeing. If I see, I would reflect. Where does it reflect from? Where does it shine from? Where does it manifest it from? Not from outer heaven. It's from the inner heavens. It's from the inside of us. It's where the hope of glory dwells. Christ dwells inside of us. So our true being is the Christ. What does that mean? It means it's the anointed of God. That means that which we were in the beginning, the word that God spoke. And he said, image is the word. Now, John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, but that word became human flesh. But we saw the glory of this human flesh. So what does that mean? That means you and I were the word in the beginning. And when we came, when we were when that word entered into the realm of flesh, something happened to us, a veil came over. So every human being left uh, dead in that consciousness, to that original consciousness, and forgot who he was. You can see this in Deuteronomy chapter 32, that Moses, is singing his song and he calls the children of Israel and he says you have forgotten the rock that you were hewn from so he's bringing into the remembrance who they were in the father before taking the form of flesh so now we don't know much about that and we don't necessarily need to but what we need to know is right now being awakened into that consciousness how does that happen he says uh, hebrews chapter 9 and 10 as i said this is just an introduction i'm going all over but we're going to spending time on all of these terms and understand faith in a bigger language the book of hebrews that i began by quoting the first verse of chapter 11 which says faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of not seen things not seen uh, says this 11 chapter after basically going through some details now when you go and look at the details it's always a basically or let me say it in this way that chapter 3 and chapter 4 are focused on works and rest and he says but let us enter into this rest let us not be working the works of the law let us not be trying to perform and let us not living by the law of flesh uh, and he says what causes someone to be in that place from the beginning has been on belief toward what the holy spirit reveals toward what the spirit says that's why he says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart now he says the hearts were hardened but now there is something that has to come and change this heart from this evil uh, conscience uh, which is a heart that doesn't remember anything and doesn't believe anything about that origin. And he says, therefore, for you to have faith concerning who you are, something needs to be happened to that conscience that is veiled by dead works. What does the dead work mean? Those are all the works that you try to do to get, your, to get rid of a conscience that is constantly saying you are inferior to God and you have to do something so you can have a face-to-face -face encounter or conversation with him and he says but let me show you something there is something that can cleanse this evil conscience from your heart and that is called the blood of Christ what does that mean that means the life uh, given through the Christ because the blood is the life of the soul or the life of the flesh you can see this in uh, Leviticus chapter 17 and it says when that life is given 
pointing out to the cross. What do you see there? You see the true manifestation of who God is to humanity. What is that? When you were enemies in your mind, he reconciled you in the body of his own flesh. Again, what does that mean in a simple language? It means our conscience was spotted, stained, defiled, polluted uh, by our own thoughts that saw us less than what God says we are. That's why we were trying to make ourselves perfect constantly. He says, but now with one sacrifice, he has per perfected forever. He's not going to perfect you. He's not going to perfect me. He's not going to perfect your neighbor. He's not going to perfect this president or that murderer or the other one. He says he has perfected them forever. What again? Why is he saying this? He says just as through Adam, everyone was made imperfect, meaning Adam showed, proved that mankind without God is imperfect. Now, God has come in the person of Jesus Christ showing that mankind is perfect in God. So the gospel that we preach, Paul says, is not to make you perfect in Colossians chapter 1, I think, um, verse 30 uh, or 29. It's not to perfect you, it's to present you perfect. What does that mean? That means if, let's say this is a phone, when I'm giving this to you, I'm presenting this to you. So he says the perfection is not something that I'm trying to make you to become. Perfection is something that you are and you don't see it because of the veil of the flesh. So let me help you so you can see. Let me speak to you the good news of God. Let me speak to you the truth about God. Why do you listen to worthless words concerning yourself i think every one of us had um, this example either for ourselves or someone in the family or somebody somebody among our friends or at least in the movies which you always see two types of parents one is constantly criticizing uh, basically their child and they say you will never uh, do anything you will never be able to become anything you will never be able to grow into anything you will never be able to become anything and the other one constantly says you will be a great uh, teacher you will be a great doctor you will be a great person you will be an inventor you will be um, a loving person and the, the way uh, these two parents these two types of parents approach and impart in their children is two different ways one uh, basically the one the good one is seeing in the person something before they see for themselves that's who God is God saw in us before we saw in ourselves his own glory once again God saw in us before we saw in ourselves his glory God saw in us his own image before we saw in ourselves his image. And this makes so much uh, change to our way of approaching faith. Because now all of a sudden faith is not something that we uh, try to increase or try to have or uh, all those things that over the years we have had teaching for. Um, how to have faith, how to, how to increase faith, how to do this, how to do that. But faith becomes, um, becomes that gift of God to mankind uh, that sets mankind free from their works and they can begin to understand their true origin. Because if you know where you come from, just as the Bible says about Jesus, he knew where he came from, uh, then you will never try to gain something you will never try to achieve something you will never try to become something you just enjoy the place that you are and the person that you are and then you realize why Jesus said I will come and receive you to myself that where I am 
you will be also. He was not talking about a physical location or even in that sense of a far uh, heaven, uh, a heavenly place or a mansion or something. He said, if you can be where I am, where I am in God, where I am is in my original design, where I am is in the life that God is. I have begun to be in the place that God says, in this place, in this place, it's called in the anointed place, it's called the Christ place, it's called the Christ consciousness. In that awareness, you don't need to be in any place, you don't need to look for uh, the future. Uh, you can begin to enjoy right now that which you are waiting for in future. Now, please, when I say this, don't try to apply this to specific circumstances because we, I haven't been talking about any of those things. Don't try to use this uh, teaching for trying to make money or trying to get healed or trying to um, get saved, getting someone saved or trying to escape from hell. I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm trying to show you what is the purpose of faith, what is the major um, profound truth concerning faith so we can experience a bit of rest for our soul. A soul that was trying to uh, always do something, to become something, can find this uh, rest. So the first thing that we need to know, therefore, is this. Faith is seeing the unseen. Faith is seeing the unseen. So faith celebrates the unseen now. Faith doesn't wait for anything in future, doesn't wait for feeling, doesn't wait for anything. Faith is about the unseen. But the second tip is this. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So the unseen can be seen by hearing. But the third point, what do you hear? Or what is this thing that Paul says, faith comes by hearing? Hearing what? Hearing the word. So faith is about seeing the unseen and you can begin to see the unseen by hearing and for you to hear, uh, you, what you hear is the word. So there is a word about me. There is a word about you, which is that word which was in the beginning. When you begin to hear that word, then you can begin to see that which is unseen. So let me tell you this once again, or let me put it in a more simple way. The word that was in the beginning, it wasn't only the Jesus that we know on earth. The word in the beginning reflects the image of God. It says, in fact, it says it was face to face with God. So the word in the beginning, that word is what we need to hear. And we have heard so many things. Um, the Bible says you have, uh, Paul says you have had many tutors, many schoolmasters but not many fathers. You have had many people that have come to guide you, to lead you, to teach you, to um, basically even sometimes lord over you, but none of them have been your father. So he says, but the word that was in the beginning, if that begins to be spoken, you can begin to hear and then you can begin to see that which was in the beginning. Do you see the loop? So now how does this start? Before uh, there was ever a Jesus on earth, uh, God spoke through the prophets. They brought a message and their message was not a perfect message because they couldn't give the perfect perfection, the, the perfect interpretation. And the people uh, neither could understand that message. That's why that message became only letters uh, in tablets of stone or <laughs> even now on uh, basically uh, printed on the pages of a book. But then the true word of God became flesh and he began to show what the word is. And 
out of the mouth of the incarnated word of God, the truth began to be spoken and out of him flowed like a river, grace and truth. And whoever receives that is being awakened into his soul like a garden uh, of well water garden, a place that the tree of life finally can manifest itself and we can begin to eat of its fruit and be in the fellowship with that tree inside of us. So in having fellowship with him, we can reflect him as through us. So this is the story that says faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I would like to add about me. So faith in me is being built up or is birthed inside of me when I begin to hear the Spirit of God speaking to me concerning the word that was in the beginning calling me you are my beloved son and that awakens me uh, into the reality of a consciousness that doesn't separate itself anymore from God but it's in that place this is the story of the faith in the New Testament scriptures and this is very profound there is um, um, basically many things that we can say about this so one thing that I would like to add is because I said faith comes by uh, or faith is seeing the unseen but faith comes by hearing but faith comes by hearing the word of God so all of this helps us to have the unseen manifested that's why even you can see why uh, there's so much um, emphasis on manifestation or revelation in the new testament but what is the thing that god saw and the son was shown the same thing that he saw this was god seeing himself in the son God seeing himself in the son just like any father in the flesh when they give birth to uh, a son what does that son is going to look like and he's grown up he's going to look like exactly like the father so that's the story the father saw in human beings in mankind in you in me in our neighbor in our friend in our co-worker he saw in all of us himself that's why even Ephesians chapter 3 says that uh, there is only one father there is one Lord one faith we're going to be talking about this in details and then he says because everyone is named every family is named after this one father every family is named after this father is surnamed after this father he is the father of all the spirits He's the father of all the spirits of the flesh. He is our origin. He is the rock from which we were hewn. He is the origin. He's the beginning. He's our uh, place of birth. In him, uh, even one of the pagan poets have written, uh, which is quoted by Paul in Acts 17, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Even though uh, we don't have, we haven't had that, a full awareness of this truth but the truth of the matter right now is which is the that's what the Bible calls the word of truth the gospel of your salvation the word of truth is I was before the creation of human flesh I was in the image and likeness of God and the sleep that came to me is now turned into awakening and right now I have a redeemed image which was uh, lost. So he came, he created me, but at some point he also redeemed me. So what he created, whatever happened to that image through Adam is reversed through Jesus, through Christ, through the second man. So that's the whole context of the bible that's the whole context we miss in fact uh, what this book has to say if we don't always see this because um, we tend to divide this into different uh, camps of teachings we tend to make this a religious moral code of conduct we we tend to take this as uh, a written 
um, sentence of judgment against those who don't believe what this one says or uh, even we use this as a way of debating with one another or even right now uh, YouTube is filled with so many videos about this preacher and that preacher and this one has said this and that one said that and unfortunately the views of those videos are um, going through the roof while teachings that are solid that are uh, not um, condemning anyone but they are in fact bringing the revelation of who everyone is they're not being watched because the uh, appetite in human beings because of the junk that they have been eating because of the words that are worthless and they're being addicted to those uh, words um, gossip and slander and um, hatred and all those things have become the new norm and they have forgotten uh, the their origin that we are all brothers that kindness and love and gentleness all those things are the fruit of the spirit and we will never be satisfied we will never have a desire or hung hunger satisfied except if we eat of the fruits of the spirit and uh, that's unfortunate but uh, we believe that uh, the truth of the word of God will shine uh, like the light in darkness and every uh, dead soul will hear this truth and they will begin to awaken into this and all this fight and um, basically um, way of um, contradicting one another and opposing one another uh, will be out of the way and lastly I need to uh, point you at uh, one major thing about this faith so uh, we can uh, have this always in perspective uh, so we don't become like those who believe for a short time and they forget what manner of man they were they don't uh, we don't become like those that just hear the truth and they go with joy for a short season but when the heat comes up they dry up and they wither away um, we continue in this mirror that constantly reflects us and we can begin to see that mirror constantly until we are fully being awakened into the image that we see so let's look at second corinthian chapter uh, 4 verse 16 this is what paul says therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary thank god but the things which are not seen are eternal that thing the unseen that you and i look for is eternal what is the only eternal things concerning mankind the image of god that is eternal now how can you uh, do what verse 18 says how can you uh, not look at the things which are seen because that's very easy you can i can look at this uh, mark and i can look at this phone because they, these are seen but he says we don't look at the things that are seen of obviously it's not talking about these two it's talking about something about ourselves but he says but at the things which are not seen we look at the things that are not seen it's amazing how can you look on something that is unseen if it's unseen you can't look at it but he says we can why because all over this book second epistle to the church at corinth he's been talking about a glory that is not like that glory of the old covenant in the face of moses but it's the glory on the faith face of jesus christ which reflects us and beholding that verse 18 of chapter 3 we also are being transformed finding the same form uh, from glory to glory so what is the thing that he says we look what is the unseen that we look the glory of god in the face 
of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ in the context of here? The Son on earth that manifests the Father in heaven. So when I look at him, I see the Father in him. So the Father in heaven that I call him God is no longer an invisible person, but is a visible uh, image manifested on earth in the person of the Son of God. And when I see the firstborn Son of God, I'm being awakened into, I'm a son too. That's why even Romans 8 says, we were all predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. That's, that's the context of Romans 8. That's the context of Galatians. That's the context of all the epistles. And that's the context of, by the way, book of Revelation chapter 21. It says, whoever overcomes shall inherit all things. He shall be my son and I shall be to him a father. It's not about... Um, it's not about lake of fire and it's not about a beast manifesting. It's not about a chip you get on your forehead on, or your right hand. All those things come from a, a blind sight that has been uh, basically veiled by human teachings and philosophies and traditions that has closed their eyes to what he says as the spirit and they have begun to portray uh, in once again their own words what the word of God is trying to say in some other language. They have taken that which is revealing the glorious grace of God in the book of Revelation and they've turned this into uh, basically fear, uh, threatening um, events in future and a wrathful God that is not, that can't help himself but um, to basically get into that place that he can judge the world, that he can condemn the world, that he can cause his creation to collapse, that stars would fall and the earth um, would be, uh, the, the sea would be filled with wormwood and all those things. And when we see those things, we lost sight of the truth and we forget the word of truth. There are many words, but there is only one word of truth. And it says that's the gospel of salvation. And that's the only thing Paul preached. And I understand there are symbologies. I understand there are uh, languages that are sometimes hard to understand. I also understand that Peter acknowledged the same thing in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. He said there are many things that are hard to understand. Paul talks about them. It's uh, hard to understand for unlearned and uneducated. But don't twist the scriptures, he says. Wait for the understanding to come. Allow God to explain this to you. Because the moment you do this, what you are doing, you are actually once again veiling the face of your origin. James chapter 1 says the face of your genesis. I know it's not being um, taught that way and it's not even being translated that way, but let me show you the verse. Chapter uh, 1 of James verse 23, he says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. The word natural is the word uh, genesis. He says, He's seeing uh, the face of his Genesis in a mirror. What is the face of your Genesis? The face of your beginning. What face is that? The image of God. Right in the beginning, the face of your Genesis, the face of your birth uh, from God, not from earth, from God. Uh, you're, you came from God. You are a spirit. You are a life-giving spirit. You are not a mere human being, nor, nor a flesh and blood only. So that's the truth about our beginning and our origin. So by understanding this, what we can begin to move into in the next videos is now moving toward some of the, the terms, the terminologies that are being used by Jesus and especially Paul in the epistles and understand them. Things like have the faith of God or having uh, the faith of Jesus or to live by the faith of the Son of God or to fight the good fight of faith or to keep the faith of Jesus. What does uh, or what do all these 
mean that's the context of our next episodes and uh, you can uh, stay tuned and you can watch them uh, because they will be a blessing uh, to you so um, if you have a question I would like to uh, right now make a comment and ask the question and even if there is something specific about faith that you need to know and you need a greater understanding please uh, leave us a comment uh, we will go through them and if we have any understanding concerning that we will definitely uh, make a video and help uh, you and all others for watching the videos to benefit from that and until next week the grace of the lord jesus christ be with you